Wherever you are watching us from, you are welcome to our Sunday service. Here in Uganda, we are under a lockdown. And we are not gathering again physically. But uh, we have sacrificed to be here. Because it is our mandate to always be at the altar. We are the ones keeping the altar with the fire. We are the ones who have consecrated ourselves for God to use us in this time and season where there is no hope we are the channels God is using to give hope to the hopeless hallelujah, hallelujah. when others see us we are still standing strong they are going to be encouraged so, that's why we are here today to encourage someone who is, who is in depression whom circumstances look like they have put them in a situation where they are not understanding. We are here to speak on behalf of Jesus and to speak life where there is no life to speak light where there is darkness hallelujah somebody hallelujah somebody hallelujah somebody without wasting time we are going direct to the word in 1 Kings chapter 3 from verse 16 Projector man, are you ready? First Kings chapter 3 verse 16 We are still on our series of destiny and today we are talking about recovering stolen or exchanged destinies I am encouraged I am encouraged because already I have started seeing my destiny being restored I don't know about you our viewers I don't know about you our but for me, I've really seen God is doing aligning my destiny again to his destiny or his plans. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. I've started even having courage again that we are going, go, going back to the radio ministry. So, so that we can reach more people as possible hallelujah 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 somebody hallelujah this ministry started from the radio we did almost 10 months 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That place, that time even we had not started this altar. But we were impacting the whole country, even outside the country. Some people were listening to us in ah. USA, some ah, were to us USA, in Switzerland. Switzerland. So we, I, when I was coming on my way today, driving here. That revelation started coming again. I don't know whether you ministers you are ready for the radio ministry. Hallelujah. <laughs> we could prophesy like nothing on the radio. We could pray for people on the phone. You could hear demons screaming. On the phone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God wants to take us back there. Because if they have locked or this coronavirus is affecting people gathering, we have now to get another way of reaching people. For the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you people there is a lot of work for God we are supposed to do. Uh, we are going to move with those who are ready. Those who are not ready. You are going to plan yourself. Hallelujah somebody. Hallelujah mutomu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah mutomu. First Kings chapter 3 verse 16. It says, Agamba. Then came there two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. Verse 17. And the one woman said, O oh my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered of a child with her in the house. Verse 18. And it came to pass that that day after that I was delivered, that this woman was delivered also, and we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, save two in the house. Verse 19. And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. Verse 20. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thine handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her head child or her dead child, sorry, in my bosom. Verse 21. And when I arose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. Verse 22. And the other woman said, Nay or no, but the living is my son, and the dead is my, thy son. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spoke before the king. Verse 23. Then said the king, The one said, This is my son that liveth, and thy son is dead. And the other said, No, but thy son is the, is the dead, and my son is the living. Verse 24. And the king said, Bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. Verse 25. And the king said, Divide the living child into two and give half to the one and half to the other. Verse 26. Then spoke the woman whose the living child was unto the king. For her bowels yearned upon her son. When she said, O oh my Lord, give her the living child and in no wise slay it. But the other said, Let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. Verse 27. Then the king answered and said, Give her the living child, and in no wise slay it, she is the mother thereof. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, Muntomo. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, Muntomo. We are talking about recovering stolen or exchanged destinies. Destinies. 
This is a, a very common story. Most of you you may have known or uh, heard about this story. Uh, there are two women who have given birth almost at the same time. Now one finds that she has killed her child. When she rolled herself on the bed and slept on top of the child and she found the child had died instead she decided to go and steal the child or exchange her dead child or son with the neighbor's son who is alive Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Matthew 13. Bible from verse 26. Jesus is giving a parable. And he's talking about the parable of the sower. Of seed. Matthew 13 verse 26 what did he say? verse 24 it says another parable put he forth unto them saying the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in the field but while men slept his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way hallelujah and it says in verse 26 but when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit then appeared the tears also hallelujah 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 somebody hallelujah we are seeing the enemy comes at night. When we talk, Jesus is talking in parables. And at night might be not, we are not talking about the physical night any day. The enemy spiritually when we say it is at night it, it is a time of ignorance it is a time of when you are not understanding what is happening it is a time maybe you did something unknowingly or without any idea of what you're doing. Maybe it is the day when you are spiritually down. It is, the, it is the day the devil had attacked you in right, left, and center. And your faith had gone down. And maybe you had started getting help from which doctors that was a time of the night hallelujah somebody hallelujah somebody hallelujah somebody this story of these two women was an example of how Jesus is given the power to judge. As King Solomon, God gave him wisdom to judge this case. And he discovered the honor of the mother of the child who was alive and the mother of the child who was dead. Jesus is wiser than Solomon. And Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. If you are one of the people who are suffering because of a destiny which has been 
stolen or exchanged. The Bible says in John chapter 5 I believe from verse 22 it says the son has been given power to judge. Jesus can judge that situation or judge that case where it looks like your destiny has been stolen. Yes, or exchange. At night. Night when is the time of ignorance, the time you are not aware. A time you are not spiritually awake. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah somebody. Hallelujah muntu omu. Hallelujah somebody. Hallelujah muntu omu. Hallelujah somebody. Hallelujah muntu omu. Jesus is alive. Yesu munamu. We in the prophetic. If a munabi. I remember there is some overnight I thought about taking your case in the courts of heaven. Nzujukira walwe kiro kimwe na somesa kukuteka okutwala omusango go mu court ye guru. There is a court in heaven. Waliwe court ye guru. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. According to First John chapter five, it says there are witnesses in heaven and witnesses in the earth. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, And also the same Bible says that the devil is an accuser of brethren. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, is a topic of another day. And we carry the same authority. We carry the same power of attorney. The power that Jesus is given by the Father to pass judgment. We also carry the same authority and power. I, I come here today to pass a divine judgment to everyone here everyone watching us wherever you are watching us from that you are a victim of a destiny that has been stolen a destiny that has been exchanged hallelujah somebody hallelujah the owner of this child the mother of the child who was alive decided let her go to the king we are here today facing king jesus we are in the presence of king jesus and we are bringing our cases today and we are asking him let his verdict be final where the word of the king is there is power Jesus is going to speak a word into my life into your life today and whatever the devil has stolen in your life whatever he has exchanged from our life with the evil things with the dead destinies it is going to be recovered. Ay, 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 It's going to be recovered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Destiny, we said, it is the plan and purpose of God for your life and my life. Destiny is According to Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 he tells Jeremiah before even I created you in your mother's womb before I formed thee in the belly I knew 
And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. You may say this is Jeremiah. He was ordained or predestinated or his destiny was to be a prophet to the nations. You also, there is a purpose God formed you and brought you in this earth. And I know the purposes of God for you and me, they are good. No matter what is looking at right now in my life and your life, with no doubt, according to the word of God, in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, his purposes and plans and thoughts towards us, they are always of peace and not of evil. You are not going to die unexpectedly. You are going to die when you have fulfilled your destiny in this earth. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Even if you have nothing to thank God about today, I want to tell you something. There are people who are buying oxygen, the one you are breathing right now. In, in Uganda shilling, they are being built every day, one Uganda shilling. That's around $300 per okay. day, or more than. You have a reason. Thank you. You might be broke right now. But imagine God has invested for you alone. More than $300 today. You are, God has invested for you to breathe. Are you, am I speaking to someone here? And imagine. Even if you don't have food at the table. Even if you don't know what you are going to eat next. Thank God. He has already invested oxygen in you and me. People are paying to breathe that oxygen you are breathing freely right now. Hallelujah. 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 That oxygen you are breathing, they are paying for it. You have a reason to thank God. I have a reason to say, Lord, I thank you. That's why we are praying today. Any stolen destiny, any exchange destiny, in my life and your life, it has to be recovered today. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. In Genesis chapter 48, we are seeing another story of how destinies can be exchanged. And they affect you and your entire generation to come. Genesis chapter 48 from verse 1 it says and it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph behold thy father is sick and he took with him his two sons Manasseh and Ephraim verse 2 and one told Jacob and said behold thy son Joseph cometh unto thee and Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed verse 3 and Jacob said unto Joseph, God Almighty appeared unto me at last, that is Bethel, in the land of Canaan, and blessed me. Verse 4. And said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful, and multiply thee, and I'll make of thee a multitude of people, and I'll give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. Verse 5. And now... 
thy two sons Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt before I came unto thee into Egypt, are mine. As Reuben and Simon, they shall be mine. Verse 6. But any children born after them are yours. They will come after their brothers in matters of inheritance. Verse 7. I want it this way because I was returning from Padan. Your mother Rachel to my deep sorrow died as we were on our way through Canaan when we were only a short distance from Ephrath, now called Bethlehem. Verse 8. Just then Jacob noticed Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? Verse 9. Joseph told his father, They are my sons whom God have or gave me in this place. Bring them to me, he said, so I can bless them. Verse 10. Israel's eyesight was poor. From old age, he was nearly blind, so Joseph brought them up close. Old Israel kissed and embraced them. Verse 11. And they say to Joseph, I never expected thee or to see your face again, and now God has let me see your children's well. Joseph took them from Israel's knees and bowed respectively his face to the ground. Verse 13. Then Joseph took the two boys, Ephraim with his right hand, setting him to Israel left, and Manasseh with his left hand, setting him to Israel right, and stood them before him. Verse 14. But Israel crossed in his arms and put his right hand on the head of Ephraim, who was the younger, and left his hand on the head of Manasseh, the firstborn. Verse 15. Then he blessed them, the God before whom walked my fathers Abraham and Isaac, the God who has been my shepherd all my life long to this very day, the angel who delivered me from every evil, bless thy boys. May my name be echoed in their lives and the names of Abraham and Isaac, my fathers, and may they grow covering the earth with their children. Verse 17. When Joseph saw that his brother had placed his right hand on Ephraim's head, he thought he made a mistake. So he took hold of his father's hand to move it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head, saying, That's wrong. Head, father. The other one is the firstborn. Place your right hand on his head. Verse 19. But his father wouldn't do it. He said, I know my son, but I know what I am doing. He also, will develop, he also will develop into a people and he'll also be great. But his younger brother will be even greater and his descendants will enrich nations. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. This is another interesting story where the destiny has been exchanged. The person by birthright who was supposed to be greater than the younger, his destiny has been exchanged and given to the younger brother by the prophet called Joseph, uh, uh, Jacob. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you don't know Jacob was a prophet, you go and read in verse uh, chapter 49. When Jacob is, when Jacob is blessing his sons, he prophesies and tells them, this is what will happen in your life. One by one, one by one, one by one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joseph, although he's not mentioned, or Jacob, although he's not mentioned as one of the major prophets, he is a our spiritual father. He is a person of authority in the spirit realm. The Bible says he wrestled with God and man. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, Now we go back to our story. Today, the grandfather Jacob. He intentionally blesses the younger one who is called Ephraim by placing his right hand on 
on the head of Ephraim and placing his left hand in the head of Manasseh. So when he was blessing them, he crossed his hands like this. And he blessed Ephraim who was on his left with the right hand. And blessed Manasseh with the left hand when who he was on his right hand. Are you understanding something? Your head represents your destiny. Somebody Repeat again after me. My head represents my destiny. That's why the Bible says in Deuteronomy 28, you shall be the head and not the tail. Your head represents your destiny. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, There are some of you, and I pray you are not the, among them. And if you are among them, I pray today may you stop that habit of moving from one church to the other. Telling the man of God or the woman of God of that place, lay your hand on my head, and you mm. give, you give always. You come like this. Just there are some people who don't feel blessed. If the, the hand of the man of God or the woman of God has not been placed on there. From today, treat your head as your one of the private parts. I repeat again. From today, treat your head as one of your private parts. Unless you are, you are a person who likes giving people your private parts always. Everywhere you go, man of God, just touch here. You don't know what you are doing. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 5. I believe verse 20. It says do not do us. Or verse 22. Is it 22 or 21? Where it says do not be in a hurry to lay hands on the head. It says... Lay hands suddenly on no man. When your head is touched by an evil hand, your destiny can be stolen or exchanged. That's why when we are talking about matters of destiny, you have to pray like a mad person. You don't know which hand or how many hands had been laid on you before. And what is the implication of laying of hands? In the satanic world, they can also impart using laying of hands. Because the devil duplicates what is original. They also have the laying of hands in the impartation in the occult. They also speak in their own tongues. When you think there are people who pray in other tongues but literally it is demonic tongue. Are you understanding somebody? Are you understanding somebody? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I want you to pray today. And you say, my head. My head. Receive deliverance. When your head is laid, or a hand which is evil is laid upon your head. From that day. If you start having negative thoughts. Eh? You start having negative thoughts, dirty thoughts. If you start feeling depression. You start having suicidal thoughts. Because they tampered with your destiny. I prophesy to someone who is watching us live today. You are there, you are depressed. To a level where you want to commit suicide. Today is your deliverance. Today you are going to recover your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your head is a symbol of your glory. When you dream that they are shaving your hair, it means they are cutting your glory. I pray for someone who is watching us. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, may your glory be restored. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ha. Can I go deeper? Be very careful where you go to saloon. By the grace of God, I've tried to maintain as possible one barber. If you want to know why, you ask me later. There are people whose hands, their hands are not okay. You know very well what I'm talking about, ladies. There are people whom, if they plait your hair, you start having itching and itching and itching. You start having problems after problems. Ladies, you know what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 5. There are people even who sell, you know, when they are washing your hair. People who are very deep in witchcraft. They know that hair, that water they have washed your hair. It is very powerful in the spirit. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, Muntomo. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, Muntomo. God help us, me and you. We are in an evil world. Anything can happen to us anytime. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The things which we take, they are just lightly. Uh, let, let me enter here. They cut my hair. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 5. It is said, there is an evil. Which is which I have seen under the sun as an error which proceeded from the ruler. Folly is set in great dignity, and the rich sit in low place. I have seen servants upon horses, and princes walking as servants upon the earth. There is no Luganda version of that. Yeah, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 from verse 5 to 7. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are seeing a wise man called Solomon. Whom the theologists they say he is the writer of Ecclesiastes. He is saying he has seen an error. Have you got that scripture? Yes. Uh-huh, you can read. Kumi, Tano, Olinyo Rokutana, Gamba. 
Waliwo HB chenalaba wansu wenjuba Echilingo kusobia okufa elio mkuru Obusiru siru ngabutu obutuzi, Obusiru siru ngabutu uziwa Awali echitiwa echinene Abagaga nebatula mchifo echa wansi Musambu Nalaba abadu Ngabeba gadeba nasi Naba langira ngabata ambula Ngabadu kutaka The wise man Solomon Omugezo no Sulemani is saying he has seen an error. Foolish people being put in positions of authority. Foolish people being put in big offices. That is an error. Are you getting my message when foolish people are put in an office which needs people who have magazi that is an error I don't want to talk a lot there. you know what is happening in our life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Samuel. Hallelujah, Muntuomu. And he saw another error. He said, Agamba, servants are riding in horses. And priests are using fustu bishi. Are you the one they are talking about? This is an error. Under the sun. There are errors which are under the sun. It's an error, it is something which is like a mistake. Some of you, you are living a life which is not according to the blueprint of God. The life you are living right now, it is an error. Let them not lie to you. It is an error. I'm telling you. Something is wrong. Even God is seeing and is saying there is an error. Today we come to correct that error. Say it is an error. It is just an error. It can be corrected. It can be corrected. It can be corrected. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, Mutuomo. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, Mutuomo. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, Mutuomo. My last scripture. My last scripture. In First Samuel chapter thirty. Musamuel chiso kano nyoro asatu. We are seeing an interesting story. First Samuel chapter thirty verse one. Samuel chiso kano asatu nyoro sokera dala. It says. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burnt it with the fire. Verse 2. And had taken the women captives that were there. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. Verse 3. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burnt with the fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Verse 4. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up the voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Verse 5. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam the Jezreelites, and Abigail the wife of Nabal the Camelite. And David was greatly distressed of stoning him because the soul of all the people were grieved, daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Verse 7. And David said unto Abiata the priest, Amalek's son, I pray thee, bring me the effort. And Abiata brought the effort to David. Verse 8. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered them, Pursue, 
for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fear recover all hallelujah somebody hallelujah the word inquired there in a message version it is is equivalent to the word pray the bible says and david prays bible david one way of recovering our destinies the biblical way of recovering your destiny is through prayer Hallelujah, and in the prayer we are talking about here it is a prophetic prayer because most people they pray and it is only one direction you need to reach a level where prayer is a communication between you and God I normally emphasize this as a prophetic ministry we are supposed to be in a level we are hearing God what he is speaking in our lives hallelujah somebody hallelujah, so if you are a child of, or a son in this ministry and you cannot hear God the problem is you some, someone called me yesterday she is an old mama and asked me papa I had a voice in the morning around 4am telling me wake up God is calling you and she was asking me Papa what does it mean? What does it mean? Hallelujah Hallelujah there are times God wants to talk to you. Just like the way he came and asked Adam, Adam, where are you? The same Bible says that God is omnipresent. How did this God who is omnipresent didn't know the location of Adam? it means Adam had fallen from the frequency in the spirit he had fallen from the grace level the channel which he was there before where God could reach Adam in the cool of the day was broken there are some of the things for you to be able to hear God clearly and you know that this is God speaking you must be a spirit led person you must start living a life of the spirit you must now understand that you don't eat every day until you eat your destiny and you eat your people's destiny your when are you going to be a spiritual person and know that man shall not live by bread alone if you are here and you still experience those dreams when people are suppressing you down you feel like you are being suppressed you are still a baby in the spirit that means that the flesh is more powerful than the spirit you are, you, are, you need deliverance from the spirit of gladness hallelujah hallelujah
we recover our destiny through prayer I'm telling you regardless of how your situation is you can recover your destiny through prayer hallelujah 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 in verse 22 the same chapter after David receiving this word from the Lord he went ahead in faith and encouragement hallelujah somebody the bible said or says in chapter 2 uh, chapter that verse 22 that all the men spirit all the mean spirited men who had much with David the rumble element object they didn't help in the rescue but they did not get any of the plunder we recovered. Each man can have his wife and children, but that is that's it. Take them and go. Where does the Bible say and David recovered all? You are going to read it later because of time. David, after receiving this word from God, he pursued after the enemies. And the Bible says, David did what? He pursued, overtook, and recovered all. There was nothing which the enemy had killed. The children, the wives, the ah. cattle, the sheep, everything. Ah. I am praying for someone who is watching us today. That today is your day to recover every stolen destiny. To recover any destiny that has been exchanged by evil men. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Christo. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, Muntu. Anyone who wants to support the ministry, anyone who wants to connect, it's the time to connect wherever you're watching us from. Wherever you're watching us from, you can use that number. You can send using any application. Any mobile uh, money, wherever you're using. Hallelujah somebody. Hallelujah muntu omu. Hallelujah somebody. Hallelujah muntu omu. Do you believe in God who restores God who can change destinies? Tukiririza mu katonda asobola kununula asobola okomyawo. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 3. Bible yogera mu Malachi. It says what from verse 3. Malachi 3 agamba eti akuka ku munyi yoro kusatu. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 1. Malachi 3 okuva ku munyi yoro soka. Look, I am sending my messenger on ahead to clear the way for me. Suddenly, out of the blue, the leader you have been looking for will enter his temple. Yes, the messenger of the covenant. The one you have been waiting for. Look, he's on his way. A message from the mouth of God to the angel armies. But who will be able to stand up to that coming? Who can survive his appearance? Will be like a white hot fire from the smelter's furnace. He'll be like the strongest lye soap at the laundry. He'll take his place as a refiner of silver and a cleanser of dirty clothes. He will carb the Levite priests clean, refine them like gold and silver until they are fit for God, fit to present offerings of righteousness. Verse 4, then only and then and only then will Judah 
and Jerusalem ne Yerusalem be fit and pleasing to God we bana abera batiftifira basanje to be in the years long ago nga we bali mu myaka ejedda verse 5 when you look down yes i am on my way ye nzija ndi mukubo let's read the kjv so ka tuko se king james version from verse 4 let's read from verse 4 then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord. As in the days of the old. Uh, as in the former days. And I will come near to you to judgment. And I will be swift. Witness against the sorcerers. Against the adulterers. Against false swearers. Against those that oppress the hirings. Against the widow. The fatherless and na, that turn aside the stranger from his right and fear not me. Says na, the Lord of hosts. When you present your offering, and the Lord receives it through a priest, what happens? A priest who has been refined by fire, a priest who is under a covenant of Consecration, a covenant of separation. You know, people now they are not thinking that ah, we can still offer because we are watching live services online. There is no need of offering. Let um, me tell you. These are the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Once you give to God through, through a priest, then there is something which God does. The Bible says Bible that God will come nearer to you. It is not me who is saying that. I am just showing you the importance of giving to God through a priest. Not through, not through beggars, not through the people who are suffering, they don't have food. But giving your offering at an altar of a holy priest. The Bible says God will be nearer, will come near to you to a judgment to judge the sorcerer to judge those who are treating you the way you are not supposed to be treated I urge believers right now whether you are gathering or not do not forget this mystery let the devil not make us not understand why we give in the house of the Lord hallelujah somebody hallelujah somebody hallelujah somebody I want this song, Lion of Judah, we worship you. And I want to pray for all the viewers. So cameras, I want you to zoom very well. I'm praying for people online right now. For people who are live. Even if we are not live, I want us to pray for the people online. So let the cameras zoom very well and it will be clear. Lion of Judah, we worship you. Because you are the Lion of Judah, and we want to glorify you this evening because you are the Lion of Judah. That's why we worship you because you are holy and you're going to restore our destinies.
Whether wherever you are watching us from right now, wherever you are listening this audio, wherever you are listening this audio, someone right now, receive right now your freedom. I say receive your freedom right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command right now in the name of Jesus. Let any person, any power that has stolen your destiny, any demon responsible of the suffering you are going through, any sorcerer, any witch, any wizard, any diviner responsible of the destiny you are on right now. We command right now in the name of Jesus, let them restore your destiny. Let them bring back your destiny to you. I can see the angels of the Lord. I can see the warrior angels of the Lord. Some of them, they are going where your destiny was tied. Some of them, they are going locating where they tied your destiny. Some of them, they are going in those shrines they put your picture there. Some of them, they are going in those evil altars in the tree. Wherever they tied your Destiny. It is being released to you right now. It is being released to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. As you are praying right now, I am seeing some of you. You are vomiting on a substance. Every food you ate at the table of the enemy every food every food you ate at the table of the enemy to, to steal your destiny to exchange your destiny right now be fleshed I command it to be fleshed I command it to be fleshed be fleshed right now Wherever you are watching us right now, distance is not a barrier. Where can you run from Him? Where can you hide from the Spirit of God? Wherever you are, wherever you are, let your destiny be released right now. We command your destiny to be released to you. We command your destiny to be released to you. It is just an error. The Lord is correcting that error today. It is just an error. We are correcting that error today. You are born to win. You are born to die. Receive your freedom. Receive your glory. Receive your star. In the name of Jesus Christ. We decree and declare whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Right now. Let your destiny be restored. Your business be recovered. Your relationship be recovered. Your marriage be recovered. Your health be recovered. Your vision be recovered. Your soul be recovered. Your soul be restored. Thank you, Jesus. 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 We command every disease in your body. Every disease, every affliction, in the name of Jesus. Christ. 
leave their bodies you disease you demon of depression you demon of committing suicide you demon of embarrassing their lives where can you hide from the presence of God where can you hide from the spirit of God in their homes come out in their families come out in their career come out in their hell come out in their finances come out we expose you by the light of God we expose you by the light of God any destiny that had been exchanged every destiny that had been stolen at the night we expose the works of darkness we expose every work of darkness by the light of God by the light of Jesus thank you Lord thank you Lord we command the destinies of families to be restored we command the destinies of families be recovered we command the destiny of our nation be recovered we command the destiny of our continent be recovered in the name of Jesus Christ we are the head and not the tail Africa we are the head and not the tail you are the head and not the tail we are the children of the most high God we are the sons and daughters of the most high God we come back in our position of authority we come back in our position of priesthood the royal priesthood we come back in our position right now where the Lord God has ordained me we and you to be. It is our season to shine. It is our season to see the glory of the Lord. Those who say that they have, you have finished. Those who say that they have grounded you. They shall see you shining again. They shall see you shining again for the Lord. Your ministry be restored. Your anointing be restored. Your glory be restored. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shalom and shalom. Shalom until next Sunday. Malaka dula his Our Jesus Generation Ministries inviting you to join our services every Friday from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. and every Sunday from 12:30 p.m. to 3 p.m. with Prophet Mike. We are located at Equatorial Mall, JGM Arena, William Street, opposite KCC offices. You can find us at our Facebook page, Jesus Generation Ministries, and our YouTube channel, JG Ministries UG. Heavens and Heavens and Heavens and